All right, Shalom, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from St. Louis, Missouri by Matthew Boyer. How are you doing, Matthew? Very great. Thank you for having me on today. I'm very excited. Absolutely. And Matthew is an entrepreneur, a coach and a world championship martial artist. Uh, a Taekwondo practitioner like myself, which is del it's fantastic to have another kindred spirit on this. Uh, and, uh, you know, Matthew has a compelling story of overcoming advers adversity, building resilience and achieving success from childhood uh, bullying to becoming a seven figure business owner. And we're going to talk about that today is the entrepreneurial journey. And it is all about overcoming ad adversity, building resilience and, and, and keeping that uh, entrepreneurial spirit alive. So um, let's let's get straight into it, uh, into it, Matthew. When you go back to being like seven years old or whatever in, the, in that space, when you when you think about that, what what are the lessons that you learned back then, and and the experiences you had back then? How have they shaped your entrepreneurial journey? You know, I would think that I never was a exceptional student as a kid. Um, as I grew old, got a little older, uh, around the age of ten, started martial arts, uh, started mm -hmm. taekwondo. I never was the most talented person. I wasn't in the best shape. I didn't learn everything as fast. And when I look back on that, back then it was, you know, oh, I'm a C student, you know, probably not going to amount to much minimum wage job, whatever in the future, but not being the brightest person and not being the most talented taught me a work ethic that when getting into entrepreneurship paid dividends for me because I didn't pick everything up fast. I didn't figure it all out in the beginning, but I just kept working hard because that's what I always knew. Mm -hmm. I always knew the work ethic. I knew it was there because I'd always had to do that. Nothing had ever, what I would say, come easy to me. It always involved a lot of work. So in that entrepreneurial space, it isn't easy. It is hard. So having that built in already, it was very simple for me to just dig my heels in and work hard at it and not get get discouraged. Yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting with, with, with martial arts, like the essence of martial arts. And that is that, I mean, as you said, you'll always have people who are bigger, stronger, faster, more flexible, all of that. But at the end of the day, when you go, uh, when you go to practice your martial arts, the person you're really competing with is yourself every day to, you know, compare yourself to how was I last week? How was I, you know, the month before where, where am I coming? So rather than comparing yourself with other people, you're comparing, you're, you're kind of competing against yourself, which is something that obviously when you get into the entrepreneurial space and you're on your own, that that's a really critical piece. Oh, it completely is. And, and so many of those lessons transfer over because in today's society, we see so much on social media. It's very easy for people to think I'm competing against that person over there. Or I'm, you know, uh, man, I just didn't answer a lot of sales calls today, or I didn't, what, whatever it is that they feel they didn't do when they hop online and they see that. But at the end of the day, it's you versus you. And in martial arts, as you mentioned, like, would you get up and run, run a form, for example, or a kata in a competition? You're running it to the best of your ability and to improve on it, not with the mindset of beating the guy next to you or running one better than they may be stronger. They may be faster. They may have practiced more. The entrepreneurship game is the same thing. You're getting up every day, you're hitting that grind and you're doing the best that you can to be better than the person you were yesterday because you're learning mm -hmm. every day, every journey, everything you do is teaching you another lesson that is just going to keep moving you forward. Mm -hmm. And so as you got into to starting to build your build your own business, uh, what were some of the early surprise, maybe things that surprised you and maybe surprised you about how well you were prepared for it, even though you probably thought you weren't. And like as you said in the past, you weren't always like the best student and all of that. But um, when you started your entrepreneurial journey, was there anything that surprised you, particularly about maybe how prepared you were? You know, there, <laughs> there definitely isn't just one thing. There mm -hmm. are just so many things that in the entire journey itself, when I first started my martial arts school, I started in 2009. January 1st is when I unlocked the doors. I spent the Christmas holiday building the school out, getting it ready. And I realized I had no money left. 
Mm-hmm. So I immediately had to pivot into what I knew. And as a child and, and always as a teen, I'd always kind of been scolded for being real talkative. It was real chatty. Even though I was very shy, once I knew someone, I'd talk their ear off. And I remember right. as a kid, my mom apologizing. like, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Matthew. He's just, you know, he's a little excited today. Well, when I opened that school, I didn't have any money for the advertising and to do the promoting. And Facebook ads weren't. I mean, they may have kind of been a thing back then. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much with them. I just had to go out and talk to people and I had to promote my business the only way I knew. And that was to go around, meet people, offer to come in and do martial art lessons, martial arts demos. And it took off for me because I didn't have the money to do the things that a lot of people do. We didn't have the social media platforms like we do today. I had to do it the old school way and the broke way because that's all that's all I had. And so I, I look back on back then I didn't know any different. I was just going out there working hard. That's all I knew looking back on it. It's like, wow, that was a, that was a real test because a lot of people would have been like, well, crud, I opened up now I have no money. I I guess I'm done. Mm -hmm. And that, that pivot and that angle of just going out, talking to people, showing them what I do, offering free classes to get my name out there. It worked real well. Yeah, and uh, and what's uh, what's really interesting about that is because you hear a lot today about people talking about trying to be more authentic and and people want to connect with people who are authentic and people they trust and all of that. And yes. what you just described there is just the essence of it. You ended up going out and just saying, "This is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I can help you if you if you want to you know, join me on this journey." So it seems to me that that ca- that that ultimately came very naturally to you. Whereas today, there's a lot of people trying to recreate that, which yeah. always kind of I find is a bit strange. There you go. No, for sure. And that just being you is, is, you know, I told somebody at one point we had a, had a gentleman in to our school. We had a little tournament and he gave me some, uh, from his mind was heartfelt advice. You know, he's like, you're a little too raw, you know, a student or parent had come in, ask how everything was going. I'm like, ah, pretty crappy, stressful day. You know, we kind of talked a little bit and he's like, you know, you just need to say, oh, it's great. How was your day? Like, don't, don't really talk. Don't share that much. And I remember it kind of haunted me for a little bit. And I, I told my, I think it was my father and I had had a talk and I said, I'm just going to do it my way. And if people don't like me or if I don't connect, you know, I'm not going to uh, fake who I am to line up another student. I'm mm-hmm. just going to be me. And it's, 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 you know, some people could take that too far. I luckily it worked well for me, but I kept it authentic and I kept it I am me. And I tell people that when they come in the school, you know, you may not click with my style of teaching. There may Mm -hmm. be another school for you, but that authentic, that being authentic like that just worked for me. So now in this day and age where, you know, we just kind of went through a time where social media ads and different things, um, on YouTube, whatever was so prompt and scripted that now more the raw, like you said, there's, there's this push to be more authentic, more relatable. It's just kind of how I've always built things. So it worked very well for me. It hasn't been something that I've ever felt the need to fake. Yeah. And the one thing about uh, running a martial arts school like you do is, and I think this is probably something that people who haven't experienced it or not martial arts, whatever, don't don't realize is that um, they become like a family, right? You know, oh. it, becomes like a, it becomes like a very, very close and connected family. Yeah. And that's always been a weird um, struggle as the school built. Mm -hmm. And as we grew and got to larger numbers was having that connection when the school, when I had 45 students knew everybody that's, it's honestly in the beginning when there was 25 students, that's how my wife and I got together. Uh, My stepson's trained at the school and her and I would ride to birthday parties for other kids at school together. We had went to uh, high school together Mm -hmm. and it turned into, Hey, can I ride with you? Because I, I went to everything. We had 4th of July's with everyone at the school. We did everything together. I've, been to all of those original kids. I've been to their graduations, um, weddings, whatever. That was 15 years ago. Uh, you do become like that. I have students with me now that have been with me for 15 years. I have some that have been with me for 11 years and I've, I've watched them grow up. And that is a, an odd place when you're talking in the entrepreneurial world, because you may be in sales or you may be, you know, I have a painting company. I'm a contractor. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm not a part of those people's lives. Yeah, I am with the martial arts school. You know, uh, it, you had said you guys had started one school, moved to another school. That's really hard for people because you do build such a bond yeah. and connection with your school and with the instructor. 
Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And then, so I guess that's a challenge, and that's a challenge that you know a lot of businesses, not just martial arts, but a lot of businesses. As you want to grow and expand and, and and grow your business, how you maintain the the original kind of feel of it, but at the same time manage to expand it because obviously you want your business to grow, you want it to be as successful as possible, you want to serve as many people as possible. So how how did you manage to? continue that or 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 expand in it in we say in an elegant fashion you know the biggest thing for me was taking those students that have been there with me for that long time and they're part of my leadership staff they help teach mm -hmm. um, they have classes that they're responsible for is to to let them build that bond with that student as well. And when we got to that point where I had a lot of teen and young adult leadership in the school, I explained to him, I was like, we're in a, we're in a different spot. This is the way it was when I was with my instructor. He was the older instructor that ran the school was more, um, more the dry, you know, yes, yes, master lineup. Yes, sir. No, sir. And, you know, I was the younger guy that kind of connected with the kids more, the parents, you know, would, talk to me a little more. I was like, you guys are kind of in that role now to where you're, the kids are watching you more than me. And mm -hmm. so by them maintaining that, then it allowed me to also have those talks with the parents and, and find that balance. Cause that's something I really struggled with is having that balance. You know, when you're mm -hmm. signing up, we had a, um, post right after COVID we, we signed up 90 students in 45 days. I couldn't even learn the names that fast. Right. And that was a very weird time for me because I was like, wow, I'm so blessed. It's great success. Thank you. You know, all this at the same time, I'm walking into a school full of strangers basically because, you know, you line up a bunch of, uh, we, at one point we had these like six boys that were all eight to nine brunette, same haircut. And then, Hey guys, wear this uniform that matches. Yeah. And trying to pick them out of a crowd was rough. I, the uh, junior black belts, my instructor stuff were like, uh, I was like, ah, don't ask me. I'm still <laughs> figuring it out myself. I said, I didn't plan this out that well. I was like, just don't line them up next to each other in class. Mm -hmm. Let's try to separate them so we can keep, you know, figure out who everybody is. It is a very hard thing to do as you grow. And I think that's where a lot of uh, businesses, I think that's something that people really struggle with. I know it, it's something that haunts me because I'm constantly trying to pivot, trying to adjust, trying to do different things to maintain that feel. Mm -hmm. And there's, an, there's another interesting element, and I know this this affects other businesses too, but I think it's often very pronounced in, in something like this is, you know, I often see when, you know, people have been there for a long time, maybe they started as kids and they become teenagers and then they head off to college and they're gone, uh, is... I always feel for the master and that is that he built up these long relationships over time but you also have to say goodbye to a lot of people. And that's probably quite, you know, emotional in its own way. And I guess that's it with a lot of small businesses. You become very, you know, very attached to maybe some of your customers. And it's a, it's like a little death when they, when they leave. It is. It's, it's a friend of mine. I, as a martial arts school, we just talked about it, how we have these awesome students and they learn these great skills in competing and they grow up to these great people. You know, we were discussing, several of our young black belts that are junior, senior high school, freshman college age that are just, it's, it's amazing at what they are, the role models they are for class, but then we have to say goodbye to them because they go off to college yeah. and, you know, most of them don't want to pursue a martial arts career. Mm -hmm. And it is very hard to say goodbye, but at the same time, you're so proud of them. And uh, I got really excited the other day. One of my instructors that was with me for 10 years, she is on her sophomore year in college uh, wrote a reference for her recently. And she messaged me the other day. She got accepted to go to China to teach English for a summer and she's doing mm -hmm. some fundraising. Um, I'll be getting an email to die, uh, chip in on that. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I was so proud. We were at a tournament and I grabbed everybody. I'm like, Hey, Hey, remember this? I showed them the, the text from her and you could still, you still get that because you, you still maintain a little bit of contact. You know, you mm -hmm. do hear from them. Um, I've had a couple of them reach out and said, Hey, I think I'm gonna do a little kickboxing class at college, you know, got any tips and it's great. I get so excited to hear from them again, cause they were such a big part of my life at the school and just in general for so long. Yeah. And then overcoming adversity, because I'm sure obviously COVID was very difficult for you. I know it was very difficult for, for, for my master, you know, he did online classes and then we, and then event, then we did classes in the park and all that. But I mean, it was, it had a big impact at the time, you know, and I was still probably still recovering from, but I, so 
obviously that probably affected you, but how did you how did you overcome that adversity? Because that came out of nowhere and a business like yours is going to be hit really hard immediately. I was lucky because I had been in business long enough that I knew I could survive it. Mm -hmm. um, the painting company, to be honest, I couldn't book the work. I, I literally had someone stop while I was mowing my grass, throw me a set of keys and say, hey, go paint the house, send me a bill. Right. I've got a, he's a state representative. He had to head to our Capitol and he's like, just go paint it. I was in the, he was doing it himself. We were blown up. So the martial arts school, I was concerned, but I wasn't super concerned. I had some friends though, that recently opened like very recent to that opened their schools. And I was very worried for them. We were very lucky and we're in a rural area and we did about two weeks of zoom. And then I, I messaged out with everyone. I said, Hey, this isn't really working. This is not, I'm not figuring this stuff out. I have one issue after another. It was felt very weird. Trying to do a martial arts class over a computer was very, very odd. And I'm a very animated instructor and, right. and, and, you know, running out showing stances if they can't get them. Um, that I, I, we were lucky that our gym was actually 60 by 70 foot. Wow. And I just said, we're going to do this many classes. You guys are going to stand this far apart and we'll make it work. And we'll also stream them. So for the people that really didn't feel comfortable with that, they were good. I actually had most of my people were like, ah, we want to get out of the house. We'll come up there. That's cool. I said, you want to wear a mask? Great. We'll stand, we'll spread out. Whatever you guys want to do, whatever makes you feel good, you should make it comfortable. And we were able to get back to classes actually way faster than a lot of people I know. And I was very blessed to have that um, ability because it did really help with us not losing a lot. And also in our community, we put together a group call and we, a bunch of us got on the phone and said, how can we help each other? And we decided that the best way to help each other was just to support each other the most that we could. And several businesses locally um, really took off during that time because of that support and the way the community came together. And I was just very, very blessed with that because I, I wrote a couple uh, articles for different online things around the US where people were messaging going, hey, what's going on over there with you? Because my class has exploded. Mm -hmm. And friends of mine and people all over the United States, martial arts, and I, I watched martial arts closer than anything, were going under left and right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we were very, very, very lucky for how that kind of fell and for our community. Yeah, I tell you, I don't miss sparring with a mask on. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have kids on the bag kicking and stuff, and they're like, "Man, it's it's really hard to breathe." I'm like, "I I get it. You yeah. want to pace yourself a little bit before you pass out." Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but one of the things that you referenced there, which I think is really important for entrepreneurs, is how much has community and being connected with other like-minded other entrepreneurs and different businesses how much has that helped you in your business i would say i can't even measure how greatly it has it's one of the big things that when i put up any content or i talk to anyone that i'm really big on oh, i was only a couple i was about a little over a year into the painting company and i asked my wife to leave her job and take on a position of networking for us Mm -hmm. And she went on to, she is our current chamber president. We're involved in local networking groups. We do so much with other entrepreneurs and other people in our community. I'm a member of our local rotary. We go to ribbon cut. We, it's such a huge part of what we do. Mm -hmm. I do not, I couldn't tell you how to post the best Instagram ad. I could tell you how to word a Facebook video properly to get the most impressions but I could tell you how to meet people in your community and build your business up by supporting them and they support you back. When COVID was, when everybody was kind of told, okay, you can go back out. We were flooded with new mm -hmm. students to the point that there was no parking in the plaza that we're in. People were parking on the streets behind it. I was getting complaints. <laughs> I got very lucky that the gentleman in charge of kind of overseeing fire code, his daughter's my head instructor because it was <laughs> nice to walk into school. He's like, Matt, Matt, this is way too many people. I'm like, I know, but they all showed up. I don't know what to do. I was like, I can't even move. Um, it was wild, but it was about that community aspect. We, we do Nerf war nights and we donate. We'll, we'll, I'll reach out to a local school district and say, Hey, what do you guys need? They'll say, you know what? We need socks. We got a lot of kids come to school that are getting loner socks or loner underwear. They're having accidents. So we'll do a Nerf event and everybody has to donate two packs of underwear 
mm-hmm. or whatever. And then we go up and donate it to them or at Christmas time, I'll call them say, hey, what are you guys in need of? They'll be like, you know what? Our, our bags program, our buddy bags that we send, they send lunches home with underprivileged kids. They'll be, they always need peanut butter and jelly. So then we'll do our belt testing and everybody's fee is they got to bring in peanut butter and jelly. We'll do wow. things like that and then give that directly back to our community, which that that community supports us. We have to support it. And that is something that I have been the biggest person I can be on. And, and I've taken cues from so many large businesses in the area that did it. And I would say that's really like the secret sauce for us of success is that taking care of that community and being a part of that community and the entrepreneurs in that community because they spread the word about you when you help them. Yeah. And that's great because, you know, that concept of uh, reciprocity, uh, you know, when you put out stuff comes back, comes back to you. So just, just finally, Matthew, what would be one piece of advice you would give to somebody who is considering starting out on their entrepreneurial journey? It's going to be hard. And you really need to think about if you're ready for the commitments and if you're ready to put in that work, you know, on social media, so many people show the easy stuff. They show the sitting at the pool, answering the emails. They don't see the customer freaking out at 10 o'clock at night, blowing up your phone over something. They don't show you the parent at the front desk crying because they lost their job. And now this kid that's so dedicated to your school is going to have to quit or the grandmother that comes in and says, you know what, the kids can't go on any further because they don't have all the gear they need. And there's no mm-hmm. way I could have a thousand dollars to give all three kids gear. So I open the desk up and say, you know what, kids go shopping. It's on me. They don't prepare you for those things. So you've got to understand it's going to be hard. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to have to pivot a lot. Mm-hmm. And you got to ask yourself if you're ready for that grind. Like the hustle mentality is one thing, but like the real entrepreneurship grind and the real struggle and the, the having to sue a client, you know, the, the real growth, the real stuff that really happens that people aren't showing you in the YouTube shorts is what you got to be ready for. And are you ready for how that's going to affect your family? Because you're going to have lows, you're going to have highs. Yeah. And, and I think it's probably going to take longer than you think. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And you mentioned a great one earlier, though, is also for people is 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 just cash flow and liquidity. I mean, you said you opened your studio, you pretty much had run out of cash at that stage. Yeah, I think that happens, particularly a lot of people who start their own businesses. If if they're if they are the person who does everything themselves, you know, they have to prospect, find customers and then deliver the services and then they can't they can't prospect while they're delivering services and before you know it it's feast and famine and all of that kind of all of that kind of good stuff so that's that's a great uh, great great piece of advice and uh, and finally like all of Matthew's information is going to be below this video but please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do um so i i own boyer academy I own boyer painting and i'm just an entrepreneur i love being an entrepreneur um, I recently wrote a book about me. It's called the tell show do process. It's about telling people about your business. It's how to get out from behind your computer screen and talk to the neighbors and the people around you and and ways to do it. That's not, you don't have to be salesy. I've always been blessed with just a natural ability to talk to people. And, you know, the best way to find me is on Facebook, uh, Matthew Boyer and um, a website will be coming up soon. And I'll make sure this is on there too, but it's mrboyer.com. Excellent. Uh, and like I said, we'll feature everything below. We'll feature the book. You can see it there over Matthew's shoulder. Tell show do. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, love the cover. Excellent. Thank I would, uh, encourage you to go check it out. So thank you again, Matthew, for sharing your experiences. Thank you, thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. <laughs>